hear that sound? The buzz of the crowd, the humming of the TVs. That is the sound of a sports bar in its natural element, a Sunday during football season. Over the years, the sports bar has evolved. There was a time where sports bars were widely considered dingy places. When you thought of sports bars, you thought of places that served buckets of cheap beer with a menu that consisted of various types of deep fried food straight from a bag. Not anymore. That stereotype is going the way of the dinosaur. Sports bars of today pride themselves on serving quality beer and food that you actually want to eat. The great thing is, even with those changes, the soul of the sports bar remains the same. The sports bar is still a place you go when you want to forget about real life for a while. When you're in a sports bar, your only concern should be sitting back, grabbing a cold beer, hanging out with friends while watching whatever game happens to be on the television. Now, if you're a sports fan who drinks, you probably have your favorite local sports bar. This is mine. The Blind Rhino in South Norwalk, Connecticut. This is my spot. In my opinion, if you want a prime example of what a modern sports bar should feel like, just step in here when the game's on. Energetic people, good beer, and quality food. These guys are Casey Dome and Matt Bacco, two of my close friends, guys I've shared many a drink with. They're also two of the owners of the Blind Rhino, and together, they have over two decades of experience in the bar business. I remember growing up and the sports bar was like a little dingy place and you would get like these twice frozen wings and you get like the buckets of Bud Light and Paps and that's all cool but like it's a ball. Yeah I think we're a little past the days where you can just open up a sports bar, slap some TVs on the wall and, uh, and just operate. What is the customer that's coming in here? Is it a younger crowd? Is it an older crowd? Is it a crowd that's educated or trying to be educated? It's a very mixed crowd. A lot of people are like, what's your target clientele? And we're kind of like, well, everybody, if they appreciate what we're doing. Um, and, and what we're doing is, is trying to deliver that, you know, a higher end experience. But if you just want to come in, smash a picture of Bud Light and, and get a pretzel, you can do that. We always say we tried to be a bar before anything else. That was, that was priority number one, was to provide and deliver a good bar atmosphere, good bar product, good beverage. Whatever it was. Is it a different mindset if you were opening a bar, a sports bar in Fairfield County as opposed to New Haven County, as opposed to Hartford County? We live in one of the most demanding markets that there is. You know, a lot of these people have been commuting into the city for 20, 25 years. Like, you know, they've gone out to those bars and restaurants in the city. They've seen it all. And that's like, that's the mecca. You know, we want to, you know, be like, hey, like we, can, we can hang. And, and we can do all of that. Fun while letting people sort of take their tie off, which I like. I think that's kind of cool. Where do you see it going? Like, do you see this just continuing to evolve, or do you think we've kind of reached the zenith of what a sports bar can do? I think we've always been pretty good about, you know, kind of staying ahead of the curve and seeing what's coming out as far as spirits and cocktails and seeing, you know, what type of beers people are interested in. And we just, we want to deliver a really, really good experience for guests. And I think we're going to continue to do that. We just have a quality bar, and yeah, it's apparent we do sports, but you know everything's very balanced here. There's games, there's TV, there's quiet spaces, there's loud spaces, there's bar spaces, there's dining spaces, everything you need. Beer. You love beer, right? Who doesn't love beer? If you're someone who regularly goes to a sports bar, you definitely love beer. Because a sports bar without beer, well, that's just stupid. You can't have a sports bar without beer, and lots of it. For breweries across the country, the most important time of the year to have your beer on tap at a sports bar is during football season. Because that is, traditionally, when sports bars have their largest crowds. Large crowds mean more drinkers, and more drinkers means there's more people who could potentially try your beer. In the business of beer, getting your liquid on tap during football season is quite competitive. Big label breweries are competing with one another for that ever so desirable tap space, while smaller, local breweries are doing everything they can to try to get a piece of that pie. And most of them are doing so without a massive advertising budget. Nobody knows the importance of local breweries getting tap space more than these guys. This is Peter Coles. He's the co-founder and CEO of Aspituck Brew Lab in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And this is Tom Price. He's the brewmaster for Half Full Brewery in Stamford, Connecticut. And in a previous life, he worked for Brooklyn Brewery. 
Aspetuck and Halfful are two local breweries trying to hang with the big dogs, brewing the best beer possible and competing every single week to get their beer on tap for that desirable sports bar crowd. When you're brewing for a sports bar crowd, are you brewing something different as opposed to brewing for, let's say, your everyday audience or no? Every beer you make, you want it to be a quality beer. You don't really want to dumb anything down. Like I don't think you can get away with that anymore in, in craft. It's all about innovating and high quality and then local is great as a way to get people interested. But it's still got to be high quality and interesting. How do you take a Bud Light drinker and say to them, you know, you, know, you should try something local when all they're used to is Bud Light. People certainly need a reference point. And that's like, I think their reference point is their light lager. So where do they go from there? Go, you know what? Try a Kolsch. Beautiful German beer. You're going to love that. As a light lager drinker, you're going to love a Kolsch. Why not step up to a German Kolsch? A little more bitter, but maybe with food, that's going to work great for you. It's all about flavor and what you like. And not everybody's going to like the same thing. Is it really tough to fight that fight to find bar owners and restaurant owners who are willing to put you on during a football Sunday in a sports bar like this when they could put on a Sam and probably sell a ton of it? People know more about beer than they ever have in the United States. I don't think it's a stretch to say that. You don't usually see a Coors line and a Miller line and a Bud line on at a bar, right? And it used to be that you would see that. You know, now maybe you've got one slot for a light lager, but that's not enough for the consumer these days. Everyone always says competition is good. It makes a better product. Is it though? Like for, for you guys, Aspetuck and Halfful in a lot of bars might be fighting for that same line for the guy who wants to try something local. Do you look at it truthfully as competition being good? Weaker breweries, people don't know their business plan or aren't producing the good product or clean product or consistent product, that'll take care of itself. Everything ends with the consumer. It's a little bit unfortunate that you are sometimes taking taps from your friends and neighbors. Overall, it's, it's probably for the best that uh, everyone has to step up their game. One of my favorite places in the world to hang out is a good sports bar. Some of my best friends, people who attended my wedding, were folks I met at a sports bar. Those friendships were cultivated over cold beer and they continued to grow with every football, baseball, basketball, or hockey game we watched together. That's been the common theme for sports bars over the years. They connect people. Sports bars are, by nature, a casual, comfortable, social environment. And that comfort factor, that's something I don't think will ever change about sports bars. Yeah, new owners are going to come in. Young folks putting their own spin on what a sports bar could be. Yeah, new beers are going to find their way to the tap lines, helping people realize there's more out there to drink than Bud Light. But despite those positive changes, the thing that makes a sports bar great will never go away. That's the fact that you can show up in jeans and a t-shirt, watch the games with good people, and enjoy yourself. From your first sip of beer, all the way to the last one. Thank you.